step into a neighborhood that appeared ordinary, only to be shattered by the emergence of unimaginable darkness lurking just under the surface. In this twisted tale, a mother of four transforms from a protector into a depraved monster, leaving us perplexed and disturbed. The story of Michelle Blair is not for the faint of heart, as it delves into the darkest recesses of the human psyche. The stage was set in the heart of Detroit, where on March 24, 2015, a house meant for refuge turned into a scene straight out of a horror film. As authorities entered, their worst fears were realized, discovering the lifeless bodies of two innocent children in a chilling freezer. News of the atrocity raced like wildfire through the city, leaving a community paralyzed in disbelief, questioning how anyone could carry out such unspeakable acts of darkness. With answers seemingly out of reach, the search for justice became an unwavering mission. Step into the Detectiveverse, a portal that will transport you to the enigmatic realm of solved and unsolved crimes and mysteries. Brace yourself as we embark on a thrilling journey through time and space delving into the deepest corners of the Detectiveverse. Join us as we attempt to unravel the layers of this chilling case, peering into the abyss of Michelle Blair's mind. Through the shocking details, hidden motives, and an unrelenting quest for justice, we'll explore the incomprehensible crimes she committed and attempt to understand what drove her to such unspeakable acts of cruelty. Michelle Blair was born on May 10, 1979. She was a single mom to four kids. She had two daughters, Gabriel and Stoney, and two sons, Stephen and Matthew. Gabriel was the eldest daughter, and Stoney was three years younger. Next came the boys, Stephen Gage Berry, the oldest son, and Matthew Berry, the youngest son. The girl's father was Alexander Dorsey, while the boy's father was Stephen Berry. Sadly, Stephen Berry, the father of the two boys, turned into what folks called a deadbeat. He had two kids with Michelle, but left them high and dry. He was always in and out of jail. It was heart-wrenching, but he never showed any care for the boys and never even tried to be there. On the other hand, the girl's father, Alexander Dorsey, was different. He loved his daughters, Gabriel and Stoney. He may have had his struggles serving time in prison, but he made an effort to be there for his daughters. Alexander would visit the girls often, even though he sometimes struggled to pay child support. He was determined to be a better dad after his release from prison. But as time passed, things changed. When he tried to see his daughters, he faced endless excuses from Michelle. His daughter Gabriel would come to the door saying her mom didn't want them to see their dad right now, and sometimes that Stoney was sleeping or away on some trip. It broke Alexander's heart to see the bond with his girls slipping away, but he was stuck in a tough spot. He couldn't afford a long court battle, and he feared making things worse with Michelle, who had a history of flying into terrible tantrums and being violent. So, with a heavy heart, he chose to step back, hoping Michelle would come to her senses and let him see the girls again one day. But that hope seemed to fade away, as, unfortunately, that day never came. As we peel back the layers of time, the twisted saga of Michelle Blair's challenging journey starts in the 10th grade when she became pregnant with Gabriel and had to leave school. With four kids to care for, she moved into a low-income apartment complex in Detroit's rundown east side. Michelle worked tirelessly at various low-end jobs, but no matter how hard she tried, ends never seemed to meet. Despite receiving subsidized rent, her financial struggles were relentless. She borrowed money from family members to survive, but eventually their support dwindled. Unable to sustain herself and the kids, Michelle faced eviction from her home. At first, the kids were attending school, enjoying their friends and neighborhood. However, things took an eerie turn and Michelle abruptly withdrew them from school, claiming she would homeschool them. Kids from the neighborhood would knock on her door, seeking to play with Stephen and Stoney. But Michelle always had an excuse ready. She said they were at their father's house or with relatives. The once regular visits from caring family members decreased over time. Michelle's favorite aunt, who used to see the kids frequently, faced Michelle's wrath when she tried to help financially. From then on, the family stayed away, leaving Michelle and the kids isolated. For almost three years, Michelle wove a web of excuses, leaving neighbors and acquaintances in the dark about the children's whereabouts. People stopped asking, 
assuming the kids were living with their fathers. Then the eviction happened, and the horrifying truth came to light. With no job and no means to pay the rent, Michelle's facade crumbled. The gruesome reality struck hard, revealing the shocking fate of the innocent children. The then 35-year-old Michelle Blair was in a terrible situation in 2015. She lost her job and was unable to pay the rent since she was having financial difficulties. She received a notice of eviction on the morning of March 24, 2015. When the notice arrived, she was nowhere to be found. Then a crew from the 36th District Court stepped in and started removing furniture from her home. But what they found next was far more disturbing than anyone could have imagined. In an unexpected turn, the police found something beyond furniture inside the home. In the white, deep freezer of the living room, a frozen teenage girl's body, tightly wrapped in a large plastic bag, was discovered. The shock didn't end there. Right beneath her, they made another heart-wrenching discovery, the lifeless body of a boy. This horrifying discovery sent shockwaves throughout the community. Instantly, a neighbor tipped off the police about Michelle Blair's whereabouts. They found her with two of her children, Matthew aged 8 and Gabriel aged 17, at another neighbor's house. However, her other two children, Stoney Ann Blair aged 13 and Stephen Gage Berry aged 9, were nowhere to be located. The police wasted no time in arresting her for murder. Upon her arrest, Michelle Blair uttered a chilling apology to the police. Meanwhile, the bodies of the other two children were taken to a morgue where they thawed for three days before an autopsy was conducted. Tragically, the medical examiner confirmed that the children were Stephen Barry and Stoney Blair, and they were indeed Blair's kids. The examiner ruled their deaths as homicide, revealing that they had been stored in the freezer for at least three years. Michelle Blair surprisingly admitted to the killings in front of the Wayne County Circuit Court. She claimed she killed her demons after discovering they were sexually harassing her youngest son. However, this claim remained unverified. The courtroom was left in disbelief as the chilling truth unfolded. Michelle stated in court that in August 2012 when she got home, she caught her youngest kid Matthew using one of his dolls to sexually stimulate it. She asked him about it and he said that his older brother Stephen frequently mistreated him sexually. She approached her older son because she was enraged by this. When Michelle questioned Stephen about whether he had attempted to molest Matthew or not, he admitted it. And once she realized the reality, she began to kick and beat him. In a gruesome and harrowing act, Michelle subjected Stephen to unimaginable torture for around two weeks before his tragic death. She used a belt to choke him and poured scalding water on his private parts. To make matters worse, she placed a plastic bag over his head until he died. This chilling cruelty inflicted on her own son paints a horrifying picture of the darkness that consumed her. After the passing of nine months, Michelle reportedly discovered that her daughter Stoney was also involved in similar behavior with Matthew. She thus decided to starve her as punishment. She used a t-shirt to strangle the girl. Adding to the horror, she suffocated her with a plastic bag, sealing her fate in a cruel and heartless manner. Finally, in May 2013, Stoney was also dead. Michelle said she wanted to tell the police about the murders, but Matthew couldn't bear being without her. She felt compelled to hide the bodies in the refrigerator, trapped in a heart-wrenching dilemma between seeking justice and protecting her son. After three days, the bodies of Stoney and Stephen finally thawed, and autopsies were conducted, revealing the horrifying truth. Stoney's death was caused by multiple blunt force traumas, while Stephen's demise resulted from both blunt trauma and thermal injuries. The pain endured by those innocent souls was unimaginable. According to the Wayne County Medical Examiner's Office, the official time of death was marked as March 24, 2015 at 12.49 p.m. The juvenile court petition has taken a grave turn, seeking to terminate the parental rights of two fathers in this heart-wrenching case. According to court records, 31-year-old Stephen Barry from Redford is listed as the father of Stephen and the surviving 8-year-old son Matthew. On the other hand, 35-year-old Alexander J. Dorsey, hailing from Detroit, is listed as the father of Stoney and the surviving 17-year-old daughter Gabriel. According to court documents, Dorsey owes a staggering $39,000 in child support and he admits he hadn't seen Stoney for about two years. He recalled being fed excuses by Blair whenever he inquired about her. 
he was met with deceptive responses, with Blair claiming Stoney was with her aunt or a neighbor. Dorsey's eldest daughter echoed similar explanations, seemingly manipulated by her mother's own words. The news of his youngest daughter's death came as a shocking blow when a reporter contacted him. It was a devastating revelation that Stoney's life had met such a heartless end and that her body was found in Blair's freezer. The pain of losing his daughter is immense for Dorsey, who once lived with Blair and was in a relationship with her until they separated after the birth of their first daughter. He expressed profound shock and never imagined that such a tragedy could befall his precious child. On the other hand, the phone number listed for Stephen Barry in court records yielded no response. The father of the two younger children remained elusive, unwilling to shed light on the heart-wrenching events that unfolded within the walls of their home. During the trial, the neighbor, Jessica Porter, aged 28, shared that she knew the two children but had only caught a glimpse of Stoney through a window and never saw the youngest one. Porter attested that Blair truly cared for her kids, even homeschooling them with love and dedication. She'd often superglue their assignments to the living room walls, showing her commitment to their education. However, a new heartbreaking truth also emerged when the bodies were discovered. During medical examinations, the surviving children revealed a history of abuse at the hands of their own mother. The eight-year-old Matthew bore 25 scars and injuries, both old and new, on his back. Disturbingly, there were loop-shaped scars on his back and buttocks, consistent with being whipped by an extension cord. The 17-year-old Gabriel bore visible wounds too, including a cut above her left eye from being struck and a broken front tooth from a curling iron incident. Scars from burns and lashings with cords added to her painful experiences. Shockingly, Blair never gave them the medical care they needed. Even amidst these heinous acts, Blair continued receiving food assistance and Medicaid benefits for all four children until her arrest. She even received child support payments as recently as December. Throughout the trial, Michelle Blair remained devoid of any remorse for her dreadful deeds. In a shocking display of cruelty, she even declared that she would repeat the heinous act if given the chance. She coldly stated that she cared not for others' opinions. In her mind, her actions were justified and there was no room for regret. Finally, in June 2015, she pleaded guilty to two counts of first-degree premeditated murder, admitting to the horrifying crimes she committed against her own children. She was facing four counts of first-degree child abuse, with one of those charges involving another child's presence during the abuse. Each of these crimes carried a potential life sentence. Reflecting the severity of the case, her bond was set at a staggering amount of $1 million. The court swiftly sentenced her to life in prison, the only appropriate punishment for such a monstrous act. Today, she resides behind bars at the Huron Valley Correctional Center in Ypsilanti, Michigan where she will spend the rest of her days serving a sentence befitting the gravity of her actions. In March 2017, shocking reports surfaced about Michelle's behavior in prison. She racked up a staggering 28 misconducts, which included assaulting and spitting on fellow inmates. Even more disturbingly, she was accused of throwing urine and feces at corrections officers using cans and allegedly physically assaulting them too. As a consequence of her violent actions behind bars, the court handed down an additional sentence of 38 months to 5 years on top of her existing charges. The gravity of her misconduct and the violence she displayed only added to the haunting legacy of her chilling actions, leaving everyone wondering what dark forces fueled her unsettling behavior. In the end, Michelle Blair's bone-chilling case reminds us of the darkness that can sometimes hide within our own neighborhoods. It's a tough wake-up call to be more aware and watchful, especially for the most vulnerable among us, to prevent such tragedies in the future. Her surviving children will carry the scars of their mother's actions and the loss of their siblings for the rest of their lives. Healing from this heartbreaking chapter will be a tough journey for them. The impact of this case extends beyond just Blair's family. It has left a lasting mark on the entire community and the public at large. For the community, the revelation of this horrifying case has left them grappling with the unsettling question of how such a nightmare could unfold unnoticed. The facade of calmness and composure that Michelle projected to her neighbors only deepens the shock and sense of betrayal. It has prompted soul-searching discussions on the importance of community vigilance, where being a keen observer can make a significant difference in protecting vulnerable children. 
Let us remember this chilling tale as a solemn reminder to be vigilant, compassionate, and supportive, ensuring a safer world for all, especially for our innocent children. Let us know your thoughts down below.